74, yeah, we're running. Earlier today, I worked number 7 and number 12 and number 10 for the other class. So do you really want to ask me about those? No, because there's already a video for those. But, you know, pick three that you'd like between 1 and 20. Pick what you'd like when you work. I also worked 19 this morning. So you pick three and I'll work them. Look at them, look at what looks hard. Because everything that you're doing in this section is the same as what you were doing uh, in Dr. Lyle's section uh, book. Anyone? There's got to be one of them up there that looks hard or looks difficult. Uh, 16. 16. I like it. 16. Okay. It's sine squared, no, cosine squared x equals 3 sine squared x. Now, my problem is, you know, okay, I'm going to make it equal 0 and try to factor it. All right? Someone says, could you take the square root of it right now? Actually, you could as long as you remember to use what? Pluses and minuses, right? Okay? I'm going to show you two different ways to work it. Because I, I think I would factor it. But I'm going to show you another one. What would happen if I divided both sides by cosine squared? I would get 1 equals 3 sine squared x over cosine squared x, right? Why am I excited about that? What is sine squared x over cosine squared x equal? Say it. What is it equal? Tangent. tangent. So, and then I would get tangent squared x equals one third. So I could get what? Tangent x equals positive or negative 1 over the square root of 3. And as soon as I see that, I can start doing what? Looking on my unit circle. Everybody, you know, y'all know what the unit circle is. I, that sounds very facetious and mean, but the way things have been going the last few days, I'm wondering. So you look on your unit circle and tell me what would x equal? What's x going to equal? Positive or negative 1 over the square root of 3? That's going to be pi over 3. Pretty certain, pi over 3. No. Pi over 6. Pi over 6. Where else, young lady? Pi over 6, and then what? 5, 6, six pi? Yes, sir. And what else? 7 over 6 pi. 7 over 6 pi. And 11 over 6 pi. Thank you very much for taking part and giving me hope. Now, when you're in college and you notice your college professor only asks three people in the class the answers or to help him, you know, when he's working or she's working, your college professor uh, could be like hard-hearted Hannah. They only ask the people that know it in class. They look at the three or four people that know the most in their class. That's who they ask all the questions. They figure if they know it, they can move on. Now, that's how I want my answers to look, because that's everything from 0 to 2 pi. Is that okay with you? If you've got a question about getting to there, you need to be raising your hand. I'm going to show you another way to do it, but I, that's pretty cool, because see, I get tangent squared. Yes, ma'am. What's the question? Um, why is the square root on 3, or is it just because it's... Oh, what's well, the square root of 1? Oh, okay, never mind. The square root of 1 is just 1. Please don't leave square root of 1 anywhere on anything you do. Square root of 1 is 1. And that's also the reason I put the positive or negative out there because I'm taking the square root. All right. Now, here's what I want you to notice. Uh, if you look at this one, 1, 6 pi and 7, 6 pi, right? Everybody see that? How much do you add to pi over 6 to get to 7, 6 pi? You add it to what? Pi, right? Everybody okay with that? See this one? Let's talk about the two we're going to talk about first. Okay, got this one. Got this one. 
Now, if I look at here, I would add two, I would add four six to here, right? But if I add four six there, do I get that one? No. Here's what I'm getting at. This is the way Sisson writes the answer. He writes it x equals 11, I'm sorry, equals pi over 6 plus n and then pi. And he doesn't put a parenthesis there because it's just pi. n pi. Now, let me explain what he's getting at. I'm not going to require you to write answers like this in my class. I just want everything from 0 to 2 pi, but I want to show you what this does. Notice, you added pi to get to this one, right? You add pi, you're going to get another one out here. Add pi, you'll get another one out here. Add pi, yeah. Or, guess what would happen if you subtracted pi? You would get negatives, wouldn't you? This gives you all of the solutions associated with pi over 6, all the way out to positive infinity and all the way back to negative infinity. It goes in both directions. Then, if you'll notice the 5, 6 pi, what do you add to get to this one? You add what? Pi. So he would say x equals that, and x equals 5, 6 pi plus n pi. And n is always a whole number. All right? And that's the way to write it if you're talking about going from positive infinity to negative infinity. All I care about is 0 to 2 pi right now. But that's the way the notation would look. Now, if you're trying to check your answers with his, and this is what he's got in the book, well, put a 1 in there, put a 2 in there, and you'll start seeing you're going to get your answers that are listed there. We that. Now, my problem is I can't do this without doing this. I have to make this list anyway because I've got to figure out how much I'm going to be adding to each one to get to the next one. And notice right here I added 4, 6, but that doesn't help me get to that one, so that won't work. So I realize I'm going from here to here to the next one. Everybody okay with that? Now, let me show you another way to work this. If I were working this problem, and I didn't think about that little tangent squared trick. Keep writing, it won't hurt you. Because, you know, options of how things work is what we're at here. See that cosine squared? I would write that as 1 minus sine squared x equals 3 sine squared x. Is that okay? So far so good? Then what I would do was I would get Uh, make sure I did that. That is right. That's cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Add that over to the other side and I get 1 equals 4 sine squared. Right? That's not going to work, Evans. I think it's 12 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. I get 4 sine squared. Oh, yeah, it does work, because watch. 1 over 4 equals what? Sine squared x, right? Take the square root of that. Sine x equals positive or negative 1 over the square root of 4, which is what? 2. And if you look at that, guess what your x values are? You get the same exact value. I kept thinking I was about to get 1 over the square root of 2, and I knew that couldn't work. So there you go. Sine x. And if you look on your circle, you'll get pi over 6. 5, 6, pi. 7, 6, pi. And 11, 6, pi. And I guess I should have trusted myself and kept working. But that's the other way to work it. If I have trouble working a problem, you know, I'm probably seeing that is not how I was going to work this problem when I first wrote it on the board. The first thing I was going to do is change it and do this. This is what I was going to do. But then I realized I could make that tangent squared. If you're having trouble, one of the things that could help you is make sure, if you can, get everything to the same trig function. 
that, that tends to help if you're having lots of trouble is get everything to the same trig function. That's a good problem, 16. All right, ask another one from 1 through 20. What else do you have? Fifteen. Oh, I like fifteen. I like fifteen. And I'm going to tell you about fifteen. We're going to chat about fifteen. Fifteen. You know, when I was young, you could get your driver's license at fifteen. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x. plus tangent squared x equals zero. I am waiting for somebody to say, Mr. Evans, something up there is familiar, something up there we know. Look on the back of your circle. One of those moments that makes life easy. Miss, are you just not writing anything down? Um, uh, I think I lost my Well, uh, yeah, do you I'm still working. write? I'm working. Are you a senior? I'm not. Wait, you're a junior and you're just not going to write? Mm -hmm. Have you ever made a B in a math course before? Yes. Have you? Yes. Have you ever made a C? No. What's your, okay, I'm not going to ask what your grade is now, but, you know, I'd be writing if this is a letter grade. This is, you know, this is going to be a letter grade difference between now and these are semester grades right here. This test. If you can't do this, I can't tell people you can do calculus. Someone tell me what magically is written up there. Is it going to equal zero? Ah, not quite, but what? That's the mother identity right there. Mother identity. Identity. So I get 1 plus tangent squared theta, or tangent squared x equals 0. Now, what does some, oh, does everybody agree you can make that tangent squared x equals negative 1? Would that be cool? I'm going to do that. I, I, there's another way to work it. But I think if I was a student right now, I'd try that. And so tangent x is going to equal the positive negative square root of negative 1. Not going to happen because what am I about to get right there? I'm about to get i. Is everybody okay with that? Is that cool? Somebody says, but Mr. Evans, that's not how I worked it. Okay. That's all right. I'm going to show you another way to work it. I'm going to give you a little help. And I like the pink pen. See, that looks good. Thank you. plus tangent squared x? Look on the back of your sheet and tell me something else. What does that equal? 1 plus tangent squared. This is the mother's daughter. Yeah, this is the daughter identity. Secant squared theta, or secant squared x equals 0. Secant squared x equals 0. Which means the cosine squared of x would equal 1 over 0. Is there anywhere that the cosine of squared of x is undefined 1 over 0? Huh. Can't happen, can it? Cosine is always going to be a number between what? Negative 1 and 1. So if you did it this way, you would still get what? Empty set. So if you notice the dollar identity, you'd still get an empty set. Is that okay? Happy with that? Okay. 
Now, look down the page. Pick one from lower on the page that you'd like to see work. Something down in this section, or even further down. Don't ask for the very last one. I worked it the first hour. It's not as hard as it looks. Children having fun. Me up here working. One of my best friends from high school just retired. That makes me feel old, and it makes me feel uh, jealous that they're retired. And they didn't even have that hard a job. I mean, come on. Okay. Anyone? Problem from later in the page. Somebody asked me. I'd work 62 for y'all. That's probably the hardest problem of the whole thing. 61 may be hard. 61 and 62 both look kind of different. Did I assign 61 and 62? Y'all got, oh, got your list there. I think I assigned those. So I didn't assign anything that you could, if you had to have a calculator to work it, I didn't assign it. I bet I assigned those. Let's see. Wrong one. I did assign them. 59 through 69. All right. See, I was. Okay, well, let's look. Uh, I know how to work 62. I'm not sure I know how to work 61. Let's work 61. Let's look at 61. I know how to do 62. You square both sides. 61. Do something a little bit. 61. All right. Sine x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now, I'm looking at it and I'm wanting to factor. I'll just be I'll just tell you flat out I want it to factor. And I'm looking at it and I'm not seeing that happen. <laughs> okay? Now, somebody says, well, could you make it equal 1 and then factor? I wouldn't do that either because if I make it equal to 1, then my factors won't help me because if you're going to factor, what does it need to equal? Everyone, what does it need to equal for the factors to be any good? Zero. Zero. And then I keep looking at it and I'm thinking, wow, I could put a plus 1 on the other side and then square both sides. And... That probably works because that's just what the book wants you to do. And I'm looking at 62, and I know 62 you square both sides. I know that's how you work 62, you square both sides. And, and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, if you did that, uh, probably a smart move and all that. But here's what I'm going to do. I just want to try it. I'm going to do sine x minus cosine x minus cosine squared x plus sine squared x. I just got to see about using the mother identity in what? Reverse. And as soon as I do that, I know it's not going to work. I know that's not going to work. Why did I want to do that? Um, because that's going to become a negative cosine and a negative sine, right? So it's sine x minus cosine x minus cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals zero. Uh, if I put these two together, I factor out a cosine x, I get one minus cosine. I factor out a sine x, I still get one minus cosine and I'm not happy. That, that's just not, it's not looking good. Now, I did think about this. Let's put, let's multiply everything by negative one. So let's make that a negative sine x, a positive cosine x, and then we'll put plus a cosine squared x here, 
and plus a sine squared x here equals zero. And then I thought I'd factor into cosine x, cosine x, but I can't, and that doesn't work either because that can't be anything but sine and cosine. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Bad day. So, I go back. I remember that thing about squaring both sides. But before I do that, I'm going to make this equal 1. That way, when I square one side, it'll work really easy. We'll square both sides. I want to get sine squared x minus 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Then I'm going to take that equals 1 and I'm going to use that trig identity stuff I was talking to you about just a second ago which I hate to do, but I'm going to. Equals cosine squared x plus sine squared x. Okay, does everybody agree I can subtract a sine x squared from both sides? Does everybody agree I can subtract a cosine squared x from both sides? And I'm going to get negative 2 sine x cosine x equals 0. And if I would have been smart on that last problem that I was just working, I think you could have factored it and gotten to there if I'd have really, you know, been sharp with it. But I wasn't because, hey, that works. Now, so you get sine x, cosine x needs to equal zero. That's pretty easy. That's zero pi over two pi and three halves pi. Does everybody agree that sine x could equal zero or what? Cosine x could equal zero. Sine x equals zero. Cosine x equals zero. And then just look on your unit circle. Divide by negative 2, and you get sine x, cosine x equals what? Zero. Got two terms, factors, so make sine, if this sine x is zero, you're going to get zero. If cosine x is equal to zero, you're still going to get how much? Zero. Now, I'm just wondering how I couldn't figure that out without squaring both sides. I'm just thinking that, ah, uh, I should have been that smart. That doesn't look right. I don't think that works. Sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is, ooh. Remember how when you squared both sides, you had to test your answers back in the good old days? You got to test your answers. You got to test for extraneous extraneous solutions. When you squared both sides, remember how you get numbers that didn't work? You got to do that. And so zero doesn't work because sine of zero is zero. That doesn't work. Sine of pi over two is one. Cosine of pi over two is zero. One minus one is zero. That one works. Pi, the sine of pi is zero, the cosine of pi is negative one, negative, negative pi, it works. Three halves pi, the sine of three halves pi is negative one, and it won't work. So the only legitimate solutions are pi over two and pi. And like I say, if you looked in your book, these would be listed as extraneous solutions back in the old days. When you square both sides, you always have to check to see if they really work. And you know why? Because when you square both sides, let me show you. Does negative 3 really equal 3? But what happens when I square both sides? 
they do turn out to be equal. See, that's what's happening here, is you're getting negative 1 equals 1, and 1 equals negative 1, which isn't true. But if you square them both, it is true. And that's where these extraneous solutions come in. There are cases where you're getting, uh, you're getting negative 3 and 3. After you square them, they're equal. But before you square them, they're not. And I, and I always forget to do that. When you square both sides, you should check your solutions for extraneous solutions. That's a hard problem. Now, I'm still looking at it, trying to do it the way I wanted to do it a minute ago. And do the little cosine squared sine squared trick. Still think that ought to work. I mean, I, I, it's just got to. I want to put my old parentheses, put sine squared plus cosine squared and try again. I just think if you did do it, you wouldn't get the extraneous solutions problem and it's going to work. Okay? Uh, I want to race it, try again. Even though I don't want to. By all means. I gotta try it. I just think it'll work that way. I got to. So, man, it's like, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Give it a shot. Okay, so really what I still want to do is do this sine x minus cosine x minus cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals zero. Uh, I want to make that cosine squared x plus sine squared x minus sine x plus cosine x equals zero. I multiplied by negative one so that I can make that a positive so those would both be positive. Uh, if you put the cosines together, cosine squared x plus cosine x plus sine squared x minus sine x equals zero. And then I was thinking you could factor out a cosine x out of both of these, but then you'd factor out a sine x out of both of these, and then the two parts that are left don't match each other, and since they don't match each other, uh, not much you can do. Uh, maybe multiply everything by 1 over cosine squared. No. I just keep thinking there's got to be a way to make that work. Um, If you multiply everything by 1 over uh, cosine, multiply everything by 1 over cosine, you get tangent x minus 1 minus secant x, secant x equals 0. And then you'd have tangent x minus 1 equals secant x. Then square both sides, use a trig identity, you're going to get the same answer you got over there. Okay, that's like number 62. Notice I turned it into the 62 form. And I know on those you have to square both sides. And so you get tangent squared x minus 2 tangent x plus 1 equals secant squared x. And then what you can do is tangent squared x is equal uh, to secant squared x minus